Hey guys, Scott with Heritage Farms Texas. Well, it's uh, Friday afternoon, I'm heading to the farm. Well, this is weekend number two of major fence repair, rebuilding brand new barbed wire fence. So if you remember in the video I posted last, we were asking blessing or curse because the power line people had came and they had shredded and cleared out all of the fence rows underneath the power lines which was great, outstanding. So uh, of course we took it even further. We went ahead and took the opportunity to clear out the fence row because they only took it down four feet high, basically fence level. Well, when they did that, they removed all the cedars. My fence was exposed and I had to make a decision and the decision was new fence, get rid of the old one. You only get this opportunity probably once in your life. So now we're gonna build a 40 or 50 year fence in its place. So uh, last weekend we did all the clearing work. We took out the stumps, we did the box blading, we removed all the old T post. We just worked our rear end off last weekend uh, in the brutal Texas heat. Well, this weekend it's even worse. We have heat advisories. It's gonna be like 102, 103 with a feel like temperature of 112 to 113. So the plan is we're literally gonna work from like six until 10 o'clock at night. And we're also gonna work literally from like 6 a.m. to like 10 o'clock in the morning. So we have afternoons and mornings. The middle part of the day, I'm gonna spend going to pick up supplies. And uh, we're, the goal this weekend is uh, to set all of the corner posts all of the stretch posts, get them concreted in, sacreted in, and then uh, the next goal is to plant, plant, <laughs> set 80 or so T post, and then uh, what we're doing is every fifth T post, we're putting in a four inch pressure treated uh, wood post. Uh, if you talk to a lot of old timers and if you pay attention to fences as you're driving around, you'll see a lot of people that'll use a wood post about every fifth T post. And the reason for that is it just gives it more rigidity as the T post have a tendency to lean over because they're not set very far in the ground. The wood post just seems to give the fence some weight. Uh, it seems to give it some stability and uh, structure to it. So uh, that's what we're working on. So uh, you got some videos and pictures to follow. Hope you enjoy this. Uh, I'm hoping next weekend when we come back we'll be uh, stringing barbed wire and uh, this section of fence will be completed so uh, hey stay tuned okay guys here's an update on what we've been doing so uh, here is one of the end posts you can see this was our old gate right here and we just didn't have single gate coming into the pasture coming off the road we just didn't have enough room to swing a trailer in and it was very difficult you could barely get a cattle trailer or a hay trailer in here you nearly hit the post every single time so uh, you can see we are moving this corner way way back the long-term plan is we're going to do a 45 degree angle coming up into this area we'll have a double 10 foot gate and then we'll come back on that side and move that corner back about 20 feet as well so steps baby steps so what do we do today well it's like one of the hottest weekends of the year in north texas heat advisory yesterday was 103 with a feel like temperature of about 114 just absolutely brutal so the only time we worked was friday night we worked literally from like six o'clock until almost 10 o'clock uh saturday morning we were up at 5 30 worked till about 11. Uh, spent the middle part of the day yesterday getting supplies fence post wood post uh, then we came back uh, last night and worked and set the post and then this morning we got up at the crack of dawn and we set all of the wood post so we have been busy and it's about 11 o'clock here and i'm calling it quits heading back to dallas so uh you can see covering about 800 feet we have made tremendous progress in just two weekends. I'm just floored at how much progress we've actually made. So up here on this end, you can see we got our metal stretch post. Uh, we got them set, you know, seven foot centers. Only reason I did that was because I got eight foot pre-cut pipe. That gives the welder a little room on each end to uh, notch his material and have something to work with. 
in that regard. Just makes his life a little easier and uh, seven foot is plenty. So, you know, what we'll do is we'll put two horizontal braces on this one and then we'll put a single horizontal brace on that. So if people notice, uh, you'll see a lot of barbed wire fence where there's only two vertical braces and like one horizontal. Well, that's great, but over a course of 20 or 30 t years, watch when you're driving down the road how those posts are now tilted because that fence has pulled them literally out of the ground. So your wire will be attached to this first one. The job of the second one is to push the first one, and the job of the third one is to push the second one who's pushing the first one. So the theory is when you have three vertical posts and horizontals, it's pushing against the pull of the barbed wire fence. That fence should be straight 30, 40, 50 years from now. Anyway, that's the story. Uh, we got a couple of wood posts that just absolutely would not dig. So next weekend, we got a little blood and guts with a digging bar, prying bar. Since this is a fence line, they cleared out. There's just so many roots and trees they took down. Uh, it's just gonna be some tough sledding in a couple of those holes. But luckily there's only two holes for wooden post that are giving us a fit. Um, I really think the welder's gonna come this week. He's gonna weld up all the end pieces. I really think that by next weekend, at some point, we'll be pulling some bob wire. Anyway, just wanted to give you an update. We'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is probably the most challenging part I have on the build. So we come down here and we have a creek. And uh, this thing flows pretty well during a heavy rain. You can kind of see they come in here. It's pretty far down there, but it's uh, that thing really moves, man. When it's uh, what we like to call in Texas a turd floater, uh, yes, you get a lot of water that comes through this creek. And you can see there's a double cul culvert down there. So my fear is you can already see over here a low spot where water has actually ran through here. You can see you got the primary creek. You can also see where you've started to have some wash out and some runoff through this area right here. So my fear is fast forward 10, 15, 20 years from now, you don't know how big this creek is gonna be. So that's why if you notice, we put our stretch post, we set them back from this creek about 30 feet on this side. And we basically did the same thing on this side. And uh, the reason we did that once again was to compensate for that uh, creek. So you can see here's the other stretch post that's going to run that section of fence. And then you have the, uh, the one stretch post, which is going to take you all the way up. But I still have to figure out what to do across this middle. Uh, you can see the power line company, they took out a bunch of trees, so there's a bunch of stumps in there. So when I tell you it's hard digging, it is hard digging. Um, I don't know, the good news is we have a lot of trees there, so I'm hoping the roots from all those trees will keep uh, this thing from washing out anymore. We'll just have to see, man, play it by ear. I just don't know what's gonna happen in this uh, little area. But I do know one thing, I gotta figure it out. So my first thought was, you know, you would take wire and run that way from that post or end post, take wire and run that way. And then what I may do is stretch wire in between, just use some T post. And uh, I may actually come back and use cattle panel through this section. Cause since between that stretch post and this stretch post, it's a short span, may be hard to get good tension. But what I'm thinking is uh, I may run cattle panels through there, which would do two things. Number one, it would catch some of the leaves and limbs and debris and stuff, which might help stop some of the erosion, slow the water down a little bit. Uh, that's kind of one of my thoughts. The other thing is that way, if uh, I kind of make it, let's just say removable and not permanent across the creek, that way, whatever Mother Nature deals me, I can adapt and make changes down the road, but yet I have great end post or stretch post on uh, both sides of the creek. So that's what we did here. All right, guys, let me know if you have any ideas, man. I'd love to see some pictures or links or give me give me some clues, man. But uh, yeah, how do you deal with uh, fences across creeks and ravines?
so here, just to recap, you know, the power line company came in, they cleared all of the fence row off for us. So this is pretty representative of what my fence looked like before. Had a bunch of cedar trees on it that came in there, cut them off about four or five foot tall, had a bunch of stumps. Uh, this is the new 40 acres that we had bought a while back. You see this on the previous owner here had all kinds of little three inch, four inch uh, wood posts through there, which actually, you know, I could fix that up and my cows probably wouldn't go through there. They might, but I could probably have survived. Very, very ugly though, not very attractive at the moment. This was, uh, my father-in-law actually installed this fence and what a great job he did on this. Uh, you can see they used wood post, six strand bob wire, shell filled wire, uh, T post, did a great job. Look at this massive uh, end pipe they put in place here. Once again, outstanding job. You got three posts. The first one's where you anchor, anchor your wire, which is pulling, the wire is pulling the post. This post right here is keeping that one from moving, and this one is keeping that one and that one from moving. So, we're taking the same concept. This one right here, though, golly, that's strong enough for like uh, elephants or something. They used like six inch pipe, doubled up uh, cross members. Uh, we're using three inch drill stem here, and uh, or two and seven eighths. And then uh, we'll put the two horizontals here, and then we'll have one single brace. But look at the after. Look at how good that looks going through there. So once again, kind of before we reach this point and we're doing the after. So uh, you're asking, it's probably only another 300 feet down there to the end of our property, but you're probably asking, well, why didn't you go all the way? Hell, it's summer in Texas and we're in the middle of a heat wave. This section of fence was so bad, it was not salvageable. My cows could literally walk through it. You can see what I did. I put a uh, hot wire up to keep them back, but that's not much. So I feel a lot better to get a few strands of bob wire. But let me tell you, it has been one, two long, miserable, hot weekends, but glory be to God, he has helped me uh, move this project along. I've had a great helper that's uh, gave me a lot of advice and tractor work and really uh, helped in that regard and we have made tremendous progress. I can't tell you how pleased I am. We got uh, the metal cross post, the welder's coming this week. He'll get that welded up and then uh, we're off to the races. And then sometime this fall, we'll come back and attack that section when it's nice and fun to work. Hey guys, glory be to God. If you like what you see, hit the thumbs up, leave us a comment. It costs absolutely nothing to subscribe. If you like to see content like this, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks guys.